Hello viewers, welcome back to Machine Art Channel and if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Today on this channel, we'll be talking about the B1, B2 visa category. So have you ever heard that we have tourist and business visa category? We have student visa category, we have employment visa category, we have marriage and so on and so forth. Then today we are talking about tourism and business visa category. It is called B1, B2. Alright? So now, what is B1, B2? Just like I explained earlier. And how do you qualify? How do you prepare yourself before applying for B1, B2 visa? What are the things? What are the criteria? What are the categories? What are the things you must meet up with in order to qualify for that kind of visa? All right, B1, B2 visa is simply business and tourism visa or tourism and business visa. B1 meaning tourism, B2 meaning business. Now, you want to apply for business and tourism visa. It falls under a category of visa. We have two types of visas. We have immigrant and non-immigrant visa. Immigrant visa is for people who are traveling to a country or the United States of America with no intention of coming back to their country. They may only come to visit or run their business. Then they have the intention of staying in that country permanently. All right? Then the non-immigrant visa aspect or type is the type of visa that your intention is go to the country or the US to visit and come back. Now, depending on what is taking you to the US, it may be a study, it may be business, maybe it's the kind of business that you go here, run your business temporarily and come back or it may be a workshop, it may be a summer school, and so on and so forth. You run it, you come back. If you want to go there again, you can keep going there and coming back. But you would have been able to book to the consular at the embassy interviewing you that your intention, including the DS-160 form or DS-260 from immigrant visa that you will be feeling. You would have con convinced them on your intention of going there and you must have proofs, you must have documentation to prove what you are saying or your intention, all right? You don't go and feel anything. So now, what are the criteria? What are those things you need to have on ground before applying for B1, B2. One, you must understand that you are traveling to the US or to the country you're going to for the purpose of just visiting tourist sites, pleasure, you know, enjoy a lot of things. They have there probably enjoy musical concerts, maybe enjoy the facilities in the countries or if you are going there to work for business and you understand that the business deal you're going to be temporary you will come back so you may go again you may come back so depending on what you really want to do the type of uh the, the length of time you will be given will be determined by what you want to do. If for instance, you are into manufacturing, then you have affiliate companies. You are going to be holding meetings with from time to time, depending on who you are to the other company. If they see that you are supposed to be going there from time to time, the type of business 
visa they may give to you may be up to 10 years visa. You are a YouTuber, you want to be going to the United States of America, you want to be going to a country you are applying for B2 visa or B1 B2 visa so that you can be going there to create content or even collaborate to create content with others or on your own. You can be given up 10 years of visa because you are going there, you will be traveling, you will be the one landing traveling, or you will plan with the person you're collaborating with. And most usually, it is something that can be adjusted. If you are working with a company and you happen to be listed to attend a training, maybe for like three months or four months or so, I may not always go to the US, but if you go to that training or that workshop or that seminar, that it will qualify you by some edge. You, you, you go through what we call on the job training and you'll be satisfied in order to, to promote you and all of that. In order for you to give a position, then you may have six months or two years visa. If you are going there for 30 purpose, but now it's not the B1 visa, you may be giving the number of years. So we are not talking about F1 or F whatever visa. It is the B1 visa. Business, pleasure or tourism category visa. All right. So if you want to apply for B1 visa, that's business and tourism category. There are some things you need to have. One, you must prove that you have something doing in your home country. All right? Maybe you are not yet a working class, but you are a student and you want to be going for tourism. You want to go for holiday and so on and so forth. That's B1. Maybe you have courses. Because you have an education you are doing, if you have sponsors, or you already have enough money, or you, you, you get funding other than the type of traveling. You are a kind of person that always has money, maybe given to you by your parents, or maybe you are a shareholder in something you have been doing for a while, or you are a young person that you are gainfully employed, like an uh, example. Some of the young people we have in Nigeria that are easily apply for a B1 visa, not even B2, they, they can apply for B2. I think like Emanuela in Makejel or Success, as uh, she's known in her comedy line as Anti Success. Such people are already earning their money. They can go to the embassy and do what? and apply to be going for tourism purposes. Now, when you check their accounts and all of those things, when they bring their bank statement, you have to prove that they have something. There is something they are pursuing. There is something they are not willing to just throw to the trash. Right, they can. There is something they want to complete to keep it well in their country. All right? Then two, you must prove ties with your home country. When we say big ties, sometimes people think that it has to be with your family only. Now, you must take notes with this statement. You know, when you go to the embassy, every non, every non immigrant you see venturing into the embassy applies as a visitor or a non-immigrant to the United States may have hidden agenda in their mind to want to go there and migrate permanently. So if the only thing you have to prove ties to your home country is that your mother, your father, and siblings are in Nigeria or in Jamaica, if you are applying from Jamaica 
or chili if you are applying from chili or uh, Ghana if you are applying from Ghana and so on and so forth. They will know that if you go there and have to migrate, you might want to walk the same way or even give your people and many other people down here what they need to do to apply the same way you did and come there and never return. So you see that the customers are, are very intelligent people. They are psychologically, they are psychologically trained. When you go there, even though you are applying as a non immigrant they want you to give them reasons as to why they should believe that you are actually applying for non immigrant as a non immigrant all right, you are applying to non immigrant visa as a non immigrant. You already so, how do you now time? Maybe you have a job you are doing in this country, maybe you have a business you are already running. It's possible that maybe I see they would have acquired some skills and maybe you are managing some skills as well as doing work, as well as schooling. So they may believe that when you go to the United States and see the way things are, that you know what to do is pay in order to seek for in our country. In your home country, you are already doing manageably well or you are already doing well. So if you have a business, like you have a company, you have a job, you're doing, how many people in this world that do you know that if they already have a source of money, that when they go to the United States of America or go to another country, that they forget about the source of money they got. If the money they were earning from their country was like 500 or 1,000 dollars, for instance, monthly, if they go to the United States of America and find a job or a business they can do and earn like fifty twenty thousand dollars monthly, they will still put the five hundred or the one thousand dollars into consideration. Therefore, if it not be in the United States of America, so they keep an eye on their business ensure that their money does what keeps coming that if they have to migrate now if you are a non-immigrant do you know that for the money you have not yet for the citizenship you have not yet done and from running from security all around when your visa expires that you will want to put away with what you have that you are already doing, knowing people well that when you come back to the you will still be able to manipulate things and do what and make your money. Will you want to say that anything just anything to the United States of America and that when you go there, you are never coming back? Then another thing is be sure that you are not recorded criminally in any security organization in your country. For instance, you have not committed crime that you have been jailed or this and this and that when they start checking your papers, they will be able to prove that this person is a criminal. You know, the criminal that is busy uh, carrying criminal, uh, carrying out criminal acts in this country, we do the same thing in the US. This is the way they see you. Then you have to do what? Ensure that whatever information you're giving them, that if you say you are trained in this aspect, like you have skills, or maybe you are, your academic background is occupationally level. After filling all the forms, and everything. You must make sure that you have your paper or you are going to keep the case that you keep on the phone. Therefore, you do what? You must 
go there with evidence of being under training, meaning your admission letter. If you are a student, maybe if you are a student of the university, proof of the last piece of cake and your first one can understand. If it is a skill, you will get what? You will get a letter from your place of training that you are on the way training. So you see, it is always advisable to get you training, especially in the area of skills, before you so that you will be able to have a back. Then another thing is ensure that you by yourself have some money. Let us take for instance that you don't even have an account. Let you not have money. Or you don't have a steady sum of money. You are barely managing your account. Yet what to do for us? That you are going to the United States of America to go and meet your auntie or your uncle. You are going there for two weeks. But if they ask you, why are you going for two weeks? What do you say? Fish, right? You're going for two weeks. Who will cover the fee? Who will cover the your accommodation, transportation, and everything? I think it. it is depressing to say. In the United States, that is going to do all of this. Yet, one day, you will give you a visa. If it is true that you have such a person, then why don't you have an account? It shows that the person, when you have an account and you have some money in your account, it shows that that person is really close to you. The person is close enough to be able to even want to your trip to the United States of America. Guys, we are talking about if you want to go to the United States of America to go buy your penny and all of this, at least your accommodation and all of this is worth more than you can. You should spare at least for, let's say, something from 800,000 or so to visit the United States of America. So do you see not even the business process. The way you are going through the business process, if you're going to agent, agent will still charge you. So do you see? Filling your tickets for 60 months, filling your appointment, keep your appointment, your medical report, if it's mandatory for you to get the medical report, especially in this COVID-19 pandemic era. Or as it was or maybe during the time of Ebola and you don't have to go. You need to have money. But imagine that a person who is not giving you money. Imagine that you don't have money. How then can you prove to them that this person is going to take care of you? How really close are you with this person? So what? You must prove that you have an account. So that's what shows that the person will take care of you. Or that when you go to the United States of America, you'll be able to manage well. You don't have an account, right? How do you easily manipulate money, change your money to your profit to keep on spending? When you're going to the United States of America, one of the things that give you an edge is that you do not. You have a dollar account. If you have a dollar and maybe you can give them the bank statement if they ask or you tell them you're also here present with your account statement account statement of your dollar account and even your naira account they know that you already know about conversion if you have money in naira or you have in city or in yen and so on and so forth you can easily convert that money to what dollars so do you have money of your own that we put to them that you are going to provide them? Second, do you have a third, third, fourth, do you 
have a contact person there? Do you have a person to know? How did you get to know about United States of America? Or are you a Jordana like me? If you are in the world of you know, geography, there are a lot of things in the university and so on and so forth. Or is it from the geography you study? How do you know? Have you ever heard anything about United States of America? What is your inspiration? How are you sure that when you go to the United States of America, you're able to manipulate it in the world? So, these are some of the things. If you have a contact person, listen, a contact person must not necessarily be the one to pay for your drink or the one that we have to pay you. It may be a business contact person, which you might even be the one paying for giving benefits to that person. Or you know this person because you have been transacting business. Maybe the person transacts and you get paid for the business. You understand. So, who is your contact person? Who do you know in the United States of America? If you know the person who are applying for prison to business, all right, and you know the person in the United States and very through that business, and you have documentation of the business, it is better for you to give that person as your contact person. They're saying that you are going to this person to sponsor your trip, that say it is that person or giving the name and contact information of another person you know that stays in the United States that you cannot do any form of business deal with. You have tips about transacting this business like this. Probably the name, maybe the address, phone number, and so on of the person may be in that transaction information. Well, if you don't have any proof ever, then the security, maybe Homeland Security, or the embassy itself, we have to be the ones who investigate your claim because whatever you are writing, remember, if it's not well documented, it doesn't claim on this is verified. So they may contact that person. No one, where the person is, what the person is, phone number of the person, email, you know, and so on and so forth. So if you give all of those information, they will want to really know that person, especially if the person is paying for it. Sometimes they will go to the extent of paying for this person's apartment or house in order to prove that it is that this person gave you out and it is true that you are not going to say because of illegal deals. So you see why if you have a place you're going to see like if you're going to get a service station or you're going to get a service at least the first time you'll be going there where do you intend to go? Do you know some hotels around there? Have you already learned how to do a reservation? Do you already have a reservation? Or you are waiting to get the visa before you make the reservation? So you see, you have proof that there is no, then you have proof of where you are going to be living well in the US. You see, these are basically some of the important things you must consider. Then, if you have undergone any form of training, like military, paramilitary, and you are filthy, you have to bring evidence. So that what you are calling paramilitary is not some insurgency, militancy group, that's terrorism, and so on and so forth. They want to show that it is something that is recognized by the government of your country or, or the world. So you have to do all of this. Then you have to be very careful when you give the name of they check them, ensure that your social media and the social media 
up. I want three. You can be rejected just because of pushing people. So if you find that like posting and your post is you know, subjective, nonsense, or have a person that his own social media is incriminating, don't ever use that person as a contact person. It will get you at least rejection in the embassy. So guys, avoid using people with bad social media popularity for your visa application, alright? It will affect you. Make sure you're keeping it real in your country. Make sure that you're excellent. You are an epitome of hard work, of transformation, even in your home country before applying for the U.S. America wants investors, America wants promoters, America wants people who will also improve their country and the economy and well-being of her country. If this video was helpful, please subscribe to Machine Art channel for more uploads. Share with your loved ones and like this video.